Angling is a series of choices from an infinite number of options. Some simple, like what's your target species, to the complexities of understanding fish location on a seasonal basis. Then there's the myriad of presentation options. It's as mental of a game as physical. Each challenge is different, but the basic process remains the same. For angling is like solving a living, breathing puzzle. And to see the big picture, you need the fishing edge. Look at the size of that bird. Wow. <laughs> Look at the size of that pike. Oh. You got another one? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Oh, it's doing the spin. Easy. Come here, guy. Boy, that was right on cue. Did you see how I was just pumping that bait, flood, letting it flutter back, and those fish look at it, look at it, follow it. And that bait drops down. Boy, they just can't help themselves. They just come up and poof, destroy it. That is fun fishing, boy. I'll tell you what. <laughs> All right, let's get this guy back in the water. Look at that little baby there, Al. They'll little... probably whack that thing. <laughs> Got a light rain again. It's just been pouring for the last few days. I don't know what to expect, you, you know, out here fishing-wise after the rain, see what happens. You know, most of you that are watching this show today are probably not gonna fish a tournament this year. In fact, the competitive end of our sport really doesn't appeal to you. The reason you go fishing is, is to escape from the office or a routine that you're uh, living in or working in, uh, time on the water with friends or family, just enjoying our great outdoors. Naturally, you want to catch some fish, you want to clean them, you want to eat them. Uh, these are the reasons most of us go out on the water. But whether you're a hardcore tournament fisherman or an everyday angler like most of us, uh, the key to a good fishing trip is what? Yeah, you're right, it's catching fish. The more fish, the better the trip. That's really what it's all about, catching fish. They call it fishing, not catching, right? We've all heard this line, or used it from time to time when the bite is tough. Well, just so you know, even your fishing heroes have tough days too. Whoa, man. We always try to put the odds in our favor when we are fishing or filming. But nature just doesn't always follow suit. We constantly have to adapt to the local weather and follow the fish's the movement fish. and hopefully put the right bait in front of the right fish at the right time. Nice walleye. Look at that. On a clack and wrap. One got, one, got one. Right got one right away. Right. Well, there's another piece of common ground that old season pros and average Joes share. It's the dialing in on a bite. Catching a random fish is fun. Not bad for an opening. First, first fish of the day. First fish of the day was foul hooked, but it was still fun, man. That's a gas. But figuring out a fine-tuned pattern and replicating it time and time again is the sweetest thing of all. This feels like the right speed here, like 1.3 1, 1 for what we're doing with the bait. You know, it's not falling too far back and you can just give it a little snap. There we go. Got him. Nice. Got him, got him. Oh, it feels so good. Yeah, but they're tough, aren't they? All right. Yeah. Pull in. Look at, that, look at that rod. Yeah. You know what he's doing? He's <laughs> swimming in a big, it's one of the big ones that is going like yeah. this. I yeah. love it. Like a prop. I love it. Look at it. You feel that head just, just the snapping through there. He's swimming way out here. Way out here. I will get the net for you. I appreciate that. Going you know you're five. doing it right when you got to get a net for for gills. Oh, oh, easy with them, easy, easy, easy. I got him. I got him. Oh. Okay, just swing him right to, just swing him right. Oh, here Al, look at the that. size of that bluegill. I know it, man. Holy cow! Here's, here's a pliers for you. Oh, hang you. On, <laughs> look at that. It's like a pie plate. Uh, I, you can't even get your hand around him, Dan. There, get that. See if you can get that little hook out of there. Be real, get real careful with those yep. hooks. There, they're minute. There we but go, man, Chief. Okay, look, I got to lip that gill. Look at the size of that gill. Look at how fat that sucker is. I can barely get my hands around that fish. And let me show you what we're catching them on here. 
you know what I'm going to do? I'm going I'm to get her back, first of all. I don't want to waste or hurt a big bluegill like this. If I was going to eat anything, I'd keep the smaller ones. This one is too big. Okay, here's the deal. We're going to share with you the secret that's out. Well, it isn't a secret, but it's becoming much more popular in the last couple of years. People are becoming very, very aware of how effective these little tiny micro baits uh, can be for panfish and trout in so many different environments. I mean, these things have caught on fire all over the country for big bluegills, for crappies, like I said, for trout, uh, a white bass, the panfish in general, perch in some conditions, these micro baits. And uh, uh, for bluegills, a lot of people never even would think about throwing a hard bait, yet it is absolute dynamite for those big, what we call them big bull gills. Yeah, you know, that have, they, they look like a pie plate. There's no nose or no mouth, everything just kind of turns around on their face. I love it. I love it. Those of you that are bluegill fishermen, you're going to like this show. The weather is finally stabilizing. The last three days, we've had 30, 35, 40 mile an hour gusts of wind, heavy, heavy, heavy rain. Water really got riled up in a lot of these lakes, bad frontal conditions. And uh, uh, the lake that we came on uh, to catch these big bluegills, uh, yeah, you know, I thought they'd be up in these shallow water rocks and we could cast a little crankbait. So, by the way, it is spring of the year. Water temperature is about 65, 66 degrees. So I knew the gills would be, you know, predominantly up in the shallows. But I thought we could get them casting on here, working these little hard baits through the rocks. You could see the little boulders. But that bad weather pattern shoved them off of the side of these rocks. You can see some rocks down here, here coming up. This is a whole rock ledge. And uh, we weren't getting anything, you know, casting up. And Danny flipped off the back of the boat and started pulling, you know, dragging behind me. And he wasn't out there just a, a short time. He goes, boom, I missed a fish. Yeah, you know, and I think, that guy. And it goes, boom, Oop, I missed another is. one. He's got, got oh, him. like got this him. one, like he's got this one right here. Oh, boy, they are tough, man. It's uh, talking about strolling, like Al was talking about in the back of the boat. What I'm doing with this bait is just pulling it along and then letting it settle back. And the bait has such a unique action when it falls back. Those fish, you can imagine them down there following it, following it. And then when that bait trickles back to them, boom, they come up and lunch it. I'm glad I brought this bluegill crappie net along. It's perfect for these big tanks. I mean, these gills are some of the biggest you'll see up north. Ooh, look, look at the that. size of these things. Absolute tanks. <laughs> oh, oh hell. Yeah. You got too excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Boy, but they're in there, man. When they, when they crack that thing, they just boom. It's not like your little dainty bite you that you get with a float. I'm, I'm going to hit a GPS mark on here. I, I got it. You got it. I'm, I'm well, I just like to. This weather blows out, and it turns sunny and calm tomorrow. These exact same fish that we're catching off of these boulder edges here uh, will move right up into those shallow water rocks. You'll actually see them on a calm, sunny day like this. You'll see them flushing underneath the surface. They'll be in there with the crappies and everything. That front just knocked them for a loop. But it ended up being good for us. We got them shoved right down on the edge of this big boulder rock ledge. And I mean, this is a big piece. And we're just going back and forth, back and forth. I got a, a couple of four GPS. No, look at that. Good one. That's, nice. Oh, 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 oh you damn. got radar, man. You can't, you oh, can't, you man. can't. That looked like a oh. better one, boy. He crunched it. So the boulders that we're fishing are trying to keep the baits in are around four to five foot of water. So this is a nice feature with this hummingbird that we can uh, do. It's called uh, shallow water highlight. Hit menu here, menu, scroll down. Go to shallow water highlight right here. Jump that up to five foot, hit exit, and it marks all of this five foot break. And you can see where our track line is right along that break. Super simple and slick. Oh, oh, Dan, I missed them. Oh, yeah. I missed them. They drill it, boy. You know, up in the north country here, the real big gills that we find anytime are related to rocks usually. And if you're fishing 
the weed fish, they're usually smaller fish. Yeah, you know, these, these big gills like rocks. And uh, right now they're in shallow water. As soon as that water and, and they get done spawning and it starts getting into the 70s and everything and they're way out there, uh, they'll move way out and start getting down in deep water, but they'll still go to deep water rocks by choice. They like rocks. Kind of like smallmouth, that's a good feature. Oh, oh, there we go, Al. You got another one? Yep. You just stay on, stay on, keep yeah, the troll motor going. I'll get, I'll get okay. the net right here. See if we can double up. Oh, oh, look it. Here he comes. He's coming up spinning, doing the spin doctor. Another biggie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Oh. You got it? Yeah. There we go. Got this little net. Is it's just barely hooked. Oh, oh. Come on, man. I'm You're trying to do it all by myself. Go. Back here, Chief. Okay. Wow. Boy, Al, another huge bluegill. Man, these, I have not seen bluegills like this in many, many a moon. Oh, he just popped out. Oh, look at the size of that bluegill, Al. Those are <laughs> just magnums, man. You know, not all lakes grow big bluegills. Let's take a look at, uh, some watersheds that have big bluegills in them and what it takes to grow these big guys. Depending upon region, members of the sunfish family are often referred to as brim, gills, sunnies, or other regional nicknames. These local terms often include a variety of related species such as bluegills, pumpkin seeds, green or red-eared sunfish, and other fish of similar size and shape. They're all easily caught on an array of similar tactics ranging from small live baits to tiny jigs, and as we see today, miniature hard baits. Across their expansive range, the largest true bluegills tend to be caught in fertile farm ponds or small off the beaten path natural lakes that receive little fishing pressure. The proper combination of abundant plankton and insect forage, modest panfish populations with minimal competition for food, and low angler harvest allow bluegills to reach maximum size. The four pound, 12 ounce world record bluegill, plus several additional fish approaching that size were caught in tiny Katana Lake in northern central Alabama. That doesn't mean that larger lakes, reservoirs, and rivers don't grow big gills, however. Swamp and bayou lakes of the Atchafalaya River Basin in south central Louisiana, the upper Savannah River along the Georgia-South Carolina border, Santee Cooper in South Carolina, Richmond Mill Lake in North Carolina, Toledo Bend Reservoir in Texas, Pelican Lake in Nebraska, and Lake Paris in California are all good bets for big gills. In fact, the impoundment we're fishing today is a good example of how the right combination of forage, fertility, and modest fishing pressure can result in superb fishing for bull gills, even in cooler northern climates. One factor that is paramount in growing and keeping these big bulls in a system is practicing selective harvest. Leave the big brute stock for spawning and harvest a smaller fish for food. Nice. Feels like a good. More than likely. Nice. I know it's a gill. I'm almost sure it's a gill. You want me to net them for yeah, you there, Chief? I don't think it's a big one. It it's is? Not, no, it ain't a big one. Is it gaining, oh, it is it gaining size? Yeah, nice one. Just a decent one. Here. You could hold the hex. Here, I could oh, here. Let me... These are, <laughs> they're nettable, man. You, you know you're fishing good sized bluegill. Oh. When you gotta that. net them. Here, let's just. When you have to net your gills, you know that they're big. Yeah. Look at that, look at that, look at the size of that sucker. I need to. Is the place for here, you? Here, get get that, yeah, yeah, just get that thing out of there. I'm, I'm holding, I don't want it to okay. shake. <laughs> the the little baby man wrap operation. Up. I grab them grab, grab like that. I mean, these are giant, giant bluegills. Look at that. Look at how fat they are. You know, most of the time, you think about catching big gills like this, I'll keep some of these. Okay. But we need some still pictures later. You think about using live bait. Yeah, you know, in a lot of parts of the country up north, a small leeches are a known bait. Yeah, yeah, you know, for big gills. 
down south you got crickets. Uh, in certain places you got little minnows. Uh, a tube, some of the soft bait, bait artificials work pretty good on them. But what is often overlooked, but is catching on really fast these days, is little hard baits. Little tiny hard baits for big gills. Little micro crankbaits, and we've got all kinds of them. This, this is a little mic micro rapala, but there's varieties of different shapes and sizes of these hard baits that these panfish love, especially these big bluegills. Let's show you our little, our little tackle box of, of hard baits that really, really work for us when you're, you're talking big bull gills. Big bluegills eat a mixed diet of plankton, insects, larvae, and small minnows, and aren't shy about striking artificial lures that fit inside their relatively small mouths. In general, choose baits that are two inches or less in length, with relatively slim minnow or shad profiles. A variety of hard baits fit the bill, including floating diving lures like the original Rapala in the size three or five, the ultralight minnow four, the ultralight shad four, neutrally buoyant lures like the X-Rap 4, and sinking lures like the Rapala Countdown 1, 3, and 5. They cover all the depths from the shallows to deep water and catch big bluegills wherever they swim. But when they're like this, this is a fun way to catch them, whether you're casting or trolling. You know, in reference to this presentation, that Minn Kota's got two attributes that are really important uh, for this type of fishing. One, Al can put that trolling motor on a constant and we can run these baits at a real specific uh, mile per hour. The other thing is that that motor is so quiet. We're up in shallow water. It doesn't spook these fish. We don't have boards out. We're just flatlining right behind the boat. We're rolling right over these fish and they're not spooking at all. This is really simple fishing, boy. Okay, Al, you're gonna take that outside. I'll take the inside on this little run here. Cut. One little cast out. The beauty with this bait is it's a slow sinking bait. So that thing will go out there and it just shimmies down to the bottom. Take the rod like this. You give it a nice little sweep. And that bait shoots up and then hovers down. Shoots up, hovers down. Shoots up. Whoop. And you, you get got bit. him. Yep. Got him. Okay. Again. Boy, that was on, it was that was on cue, Al. <laughs> That's what I like. All right. You're gonna need to net this guy, Al. You got another one. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Swim they're, they're, they're all swimming down from those rocks. They're all swimming out toward that deep water. Look at them. Shake you. Look at that rod. You dunk, 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 dunk. I got it. I got it. Man. You're gonna net him yourself. Yeah, you got, yeah, it? got it. I got okay. It. Oh, he's doing the spin. Oh, yeah. Come here, Easy. Guy. Come here, guy. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Let me get him up here. Get him. Get him off. Look at that baby, huh? That's not a big one. It wasn't like a, a bunch of those other ones we were catching. It's still a really nice one. Let me take a minute and kind of talk a little bit about the rod and reel combinations that we found to work best for fishing, these little little micro uh, uh, hard baits. This is our Quantum Angling Edge Series technique, technique rod, and it's a six and a half foot medium action rod. We spool them up. This is a, a 10 size accurate reel, super light. This rod and reel combination is like a feather in, in your hand. We've got 832 uh, a suffix braid, six pound test sticks, two pound diameter, along with that we got fluorocarbon, that's 100% suffix fluorocarbon, four pound test. You, the whole idea is to downsize in everything. You downsize in the rod, the reel size, the line, and the baits. You put this combination together, go out on your favorite lake for panfish, and we're talking about bluegills or crappies or even white bass, and you're gonna whack them pretty good. That's a guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how they just devour that little bait, boy. <laughs> Look at the size of that thing. You know, when it comes to catching big, giant bluegills like this, you know, sometimes you gotta break tradition. You don't have to go out with floats all the time. You know, experiment with some of these hard baits and uh, 
you'll probably surprise yourself. I was at a speaking engagement recently and a guy come up to me and handed me this book and he says, I think you'll like this. And it's called The Tackle Box of Hope, Devotions for Christian Fishermen. And it was really neat. Uh, I, it gave a lot of stories in there. I'm gonna read you the very first one that I thought was really great. Every tackle box is a tackle box of hope. In every tackle box, a mirror of proven lures and time-tested secrets exist. The old reliables lay alongside the new miracle lures that are supposed to revolutionize fishing and produce results we've never seen. On some days they do. We're all seeking ways to understand the incomprehensible, trying to unravel the backlashes of life and the mysteries of God. Just as every tackle box is a box of hope, so is our faith a tackle box of hope. But any fisherman who ties on a lure, fishes a particular spot, or uses a certain technique does so in hope. Hope is the principal belief of the fisherman. None of us stepped into a boat without it. Hope is also the principal belief of a Christian. No one believes without hope. We are urged to pray believing. Hope is crucial to the Christian life. Faith is a tackle box of hope. I thought that was so neat. Simple to the point. Any of us that fish can sure relate to that. Had to share it with you. Hey, from all of us at the edge, have a good safe fishing season. We'll see you on the water.